Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to yet another episode of the 3 and the 13 show. I'm 3, jersey number 3, Varun. And I am 13, jersey number 13, Rakav. Today at the 3 and the 13 show, we bring to you the story of one of the greatest British track and field athletes, Cindy Semba. Hi, my name is Cindy and today I'm going to be sharing a little bit about my journey to running and what I've done to get to where I'm at today and how much it's made a huge impact on my life. So I'm going to be answering a few questions and yeah, hopefully you'll get to know a little bit about my journey and my process a bit more. So Cindy, let's start with our first question and as we all know that athletics runs in your family, your elder sister is uh, into hurdles. So would it be right to say that your family and your sister specifically had a role in you joining athletics and is there any other reason that you would like to tell us of what made you join athletics? So I started running when I was about 15 years old. I was still in high school and I decided that track was something that I could be good at but I didn't know exactly what I was getting myself into at first because when I started I was not the best. So my sister had to run and I thought that I would be good too but once I started, it was not the best experience and I struggled quite a bit. So I decided to quit and it wasn't until my high school coach uh, called me back and told me, don't quit, I see potential and you're going to be good one day. So I decided to rejoin the team and that's kind of where my journey started is when I came back the second time, decided to give my all and to not give up. So yeah, that was really how I started. Um, and my sister definitely had a big impact on that because seeing her do such great things encouraged me to do the same and yeah to this day we're still running and training together so that's pretty cool. So Cindy you qualified for the 2020 Tokyo Olympics but sadly due to the coronavirus pandemic it's been shifted to 2021. Now how does that affect the mentality of an athlete and how does that affect your training regime? So I actually have not made the Olympic team quite yet. Um, I still have to hit the, the qualifying standard and then I have to go to my championships next year and qualify there. So they take the top two and the third person they decide. So we'll see next year when I get the opportunity to try for it. But um, it is very difficult to kind of reshape your mind to know that the Olympics were postponed one year and that has been hard but it's also been really nice to know I have one more year to get stronger, to get, to get faster and to really work on my mental game. So track is very much mental and so it's helped me to work on that and the extra time is really preparing me to be better than I think I would have been this year. So I'm actually pretty excited about the extra time that we have. So Cindy, you finished fourth in 2016 Rio Olympics. So what has the learning that you have taken from 2016 Rio Olympics and how have you changed in the last four years? So Rio was a very much better sweet experience for me. Um, I was quite young so I went into it kind of not knowing where I was and how I would do but just wanting to do well. So when I made it through the rounds, the prelims and the semifinals, I had a lot of confidence knowing that I could be with the, the greats. I could do really great things. So in the final I gave it my all. I said I would leave it all on the track. I want a medal. That's definitely everybody's goal when they go to the Olympics. So my goal was to medal, but to be very close at such a young age inspired me and told me, you know, that was at that point in my career, I had little or no experience on the international stage. And now I have so much more experience as a more veteran athlete. And so going into next year, I'm very excited because there's so much I've learned in that process. I've gained a lot more mental strength after injuries and just going through the hardships of track. And that I think has developed me to be a better athlete. So going into my next Olympics, I'm very excited to God willing medal. So that's definitely the goal. University of Michigan, what's your story? And what about your experiences at the NCAA championships? So the University of Michigan was an amazing university. I had two siblings who went there. So on my visit, um, I really love everything about it. It was kind of close to my house, but far enough that, you know, I still got some time away from my family. Um, and it was very nice to see the environment and the people and just the football scene and everything regarding that. So I really enjoyed my time um, at the University of Michigan. The track team was amazing and my coach was really great as well. So I really enjoyed that. And the NCAA was so amazing. It pushed me so much. There were amazing athletes in the NCAA, ones who were running 
world ranking times and so the NCAA finals had people who were ranked top four in the world or something's very similar but just very highly ranked in the world we'll say and that's really cool to be in an opportunity with such a great such great athletes all the time and I think that really helped me um, become a better professional athlete now and had I not had that experience I don't know if I would be uh, as I guess as a detailed of an athlete as I am because of all that experience so I really enjoyed my time there as well. A couple of years, sadly, you ruptured your Achilles. And how have you recovered? And what steps did you take to mentally recover and physically recover to bring back your A game? And what advice would you like to give to young players who are aspiring athletes? And you know, if they are facing any injuries or any setbacks, what advice should they follow from you? so that they can overcome that and get their best on the pitch. Uh, as I guess, as a details of an athlete as I am because of all that experience. So I really enjoyed my time there as well. The next question asks, a couple of years ago, you had a ruptured Achilles. How did you manage to overcome the major injury and bring your A game back? And what advice would you give to aspiring young athletes as to what they should do in order to recover as soon as possible and reach their potential? So I erupted my Achilles in 2017 and it was a very hard and daunting time. I, you know, got really sad and felt a little just discouraged with the whole thing because I had doctors explain to me that I may not come back from this hard injury. And so it was not easy, but I had to tell myself every day where I know I could be and how happy I'll be when I can run again. And so I pushed myself in physical therapy and just the opportunities um, with getting back to my A game that pretty much inspired me to get there. And so each day I would take it as another day closer to running again, closer to hurdling again, closer to competing again. And that's what really got me through that hard time. So if you have an injury or you're going through something very similar, I just encourage you um, to remember the end goal. Remember where you want to be and where you once were because that's what got me through that time. And if, had I not focused on that and just focused on my problem and not kind of got out of my own mind, then I think I would have kind of still just not been back on the track. I would kind of just have given up and that wouldn't have been good for my career. So keep persisting and keep the end, end game or the end goal at mind and that truly helped me get through that very difficult time. So Cindy, you're an active content creator. Every Friday, a new video drops on YouTube. So how about giving us some tips as well about how to create great content and regularly? So after I actually had that Achilles rupture, I started this channel, um, my name is Cynthia Ophelia on there, and in that channel, I wanted to help other aspiring athletes or people in general who are going through hard times to kind of know that they're not alone and that us as people go through all these things as well. Like everybody has a problem or has something they're going through, whether or not they talk to you about it or not. And so I wanted to give it, a, I wanted to create a safe space where people could come to and watch my videos and feel encouraged and inspired, as well as to know that athletes don't always have it all going on. People see the highlight reels of our lives and sometimes people think that we're just living in this amazing sunshine and rainbows lifestyle and that's not always the case. Actually, plenty of times it's not the case. So I think that's what I really wanted to reveal and now that I've got, gotten a few weeks of, or not weeks, a few years of making videos, I've expanded a little bit about that and so I post videos now with um, my husband as well and I do other things um, regarding track but I like to definitely encourage, definitely inspire and also show a little bit behind the scenes of my life and just show like the fun side of who I am as Cindy. Oh, and I also like to plan my videos ahead of time. So one thing I like to do is uh, I just like to like batch create content. So sometimes I'll do a few videos and create them around the same time and then edit them and try to get them on a consistent date because that truly helps stay consistent. And I do that with my Instagram as well. I will have stuff prepared and kind of every other day or whatever time is convenient for me, I try to post so that people are consistently getting this stuff from me and consistently knowing me as somebody who inspires and helps them. So that's kind of how I go about creating my content. Who were your idols growing up? It could be any sport. And have you had a fangirl moment with them? So I don't actually have any idols. My idol is God. <laughs> that's about it. I don't really like to idolize people. But um, I will say I am very inspi inspired by other really 
great athletes. So um, I think at the Rio Olympics, I met Simone Biles, who was a really good gymnast, if you guys don't know. And I was really excited about that. I got to meet Usain Bolt personally. So that was really cool. So just kind of seeing these other athletes who've accomplished such great things was really nice to see and meet them in person and just remember like they're also human. So yeah, it was really cool to see them for the first time. How about doing an impression of your favorite actor or an athlete? Um, I guess I can do an Elvis Presley accent. Which moment has been your favorite in your career so far? Favorite moment in my career um, would either be my fourth place at the Olympics just because it was such a high stage and I never had an experience like that before and or at my NCAA championship when I won nationals um, in college because I had such a weird way of getting to that final. I almost didn't make the final and I was in lane eight and I kind of had given up almost because I was like, there's no way I'm gonna win and then I had surged and won the race. So that was kind of my favorite, one of my favorite moments because it was super exciting to win that way. One word that describes you. Driven. I am very driven. I work very hard and I try to accomplish my goals. That's something I have always stood by and I'm just a driven person. I would say that's one of the words that describes me. If Cindy would not have been an athlete, what would she have been according to you? So I actually went to school for education and I actually have a certification in teaching from kindergarten through eighth grade. So I would have either been a teacher right now if I had not been an athlete um, or I would have started some business by now, entrepreneur, entrepreneurship type stuff. And uh, yeah, have my own little Cindy business, whatever that looks like. So that's kind of what I think I would be doing. So would you rather create a record that will never be broken or be the greatest British track and field athlete? I personally want to be known as, known as the greatest of all time. Yeah, records are cool and yes, it can't be broken, but just being known as the GOAT is honestly the best feeling. So I think that's what I would want. Which feeling was better? It's going to be a tough one, Cindy. So please tell us. To be able to go back to Olympics or defend your 2020 British Athletics Championship title. Yeah, definitely winning my British title was amazing, especially under the circumstances with this year, not knowing if we were going to compete, not, um, I guess, having hurdles to warm up with. So with COVID restrictions, we didn't have any hurdles to warm up with. So just the fact that I could still win and do okay in that race was super nice. So that was a really good feeling as well. Would you rather have a stadium named after you or an award? <sighs> I would have a stadium. I think stadiums are so cool. I love everything about going into stadiums, so having a whole stadium named after me would be dope. So I would really like that. Cindy, thank you for taking our time and talking to us. Thank you for sharing your story of being the champion that you are. So yeah, thanks for watching this video and I hope this allows you to get a little bit more or get to know a little bit more about me. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Yet another story on the 3 and the 13th show for all of you to be inspired. Till next week.